Jeffrey Wright, congratulations on your recent Emmy nomination for Westworld. It was one of 22 nominations that the show received. Uh, I'm curious, I mean, so many people in the cast and crew were recognized for their work on the show. What did that mean for you and, and for everyone involved? Well, it, it's a good way to start the second season uh, because we just uh, started uh, filming when uh, that when the announcements came out. And so it's a nice little, uh, you know, little additive to the fuel tank. Um, and it's, it's, it's reassuring, it's validating that the work that we did uh, in season one uh, landed. I mean, obviously, first and foremost, what's gratifying is, you know, the audience reaction uh, and the, you know, the, 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 the response that we got from all of our fans and the fan writers out there who, you know, went about writing these tangential storylines for the, you know, which I think are very much part of the storytelling of, of, uh, of the show is that we have, you know, you know, we have, you know, fans crafting their own narratives and own ideas about where we're going. So anyway, I say all that to say, obviously the show was, you know, was, was received and was, you know, was compelling to, to folks, but then, you know, when you know the industry decides to recognize uh, recognize us in such a in such a big way, it's uh, you know it's it's uh, it's gratifying, it's validating, and I like to I like to say you know if they're handing these nomination things out, uh, yeah, I'll take one, you know. So, but it but it, it, I mean as well on a practical level, uh, you know, for uh, our show, we've got a huge cast, a huge crew. It's an enormous collaboration. You know, right now we're back filming and we've got, you know, multiple units going at one, you know, one time. And, you know, uh, working on these things is great. It's the, one of the, one of the, one of my favorite parts of working in film and TV of this, of this kind is the collaboration and the number of people involved in the process of putting this on is, is tremendous. And so that means just a little more security for all of those folks, you know, that they were going to we're going to carry on with this thing uh you know uh, you know just yesterday we were filming you look around and you you see the camera you're shooting a particular scene but you realize that there are carpenters who were involved in making that happen there are electricians involved in making that happen we're you know shooting it you know shooting a scene and we're hiking up you know uh you know this hill out in the heat and you go god man it's hot you know god, you know we're reactors we're complaining man whoo and then you look up and you go wow, well, who brought the camera crane up here, <laughs> you know? So there's so many, you know, there's so many folks involved. And so that the show was recognized in that way is just, uh, you know, I'm just proud, uh, proud of that. And I'm, I'm pleased for everyone who, uh, who contributed to that. And uh, speaking of, you know, this huge cast and crew, you know, those 22 nominations are, are kind of a testament to, to, you know, just the, how extensive and expansive the production values are, you know, from you know, everyone from the acting and writing and directing to, you know, as you were talking about all the, all the, you know, professionals who are putting this together, you know, yeah, production designers, cinematographers, and, and, and everyone on down the line. Uh, what is the show like from a production standpoint, just this enormous undertaking? It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, uh, you, you just have to give into it, you know? Um, we, of course, the first season was a long ride. Uh, we shot the pilot in August, September of 2014, and we didn't finish filming the 10th episode until May, I believe, of 2016. So there was a two-year arc there. You know, we had high, the couple of hiatuses uh, in there, and it was a function of, you know, not having all of the scripts uh, written prior. And, you know, as you saw, this is very kind of delicate, very multi-faceted, multi-layered stuff. Uh, this year we start off with, you know, most of the scripts written, so we'll have a, you know, a smoother production journey. But that, but that was a long, it was a long process. Uh, and toward the end, as you can imagine, you know, by judging the scale of it, you know, there was a lot of moving parts working as one. I think at some point we had maybe three, four units working at once, if not mistaken, if it's certainly three. And I know, excuse me, we had maybe a crew list of like 400 people working on any given day. So it's an enormous logistical, um, logistical uh, uh, beast 
to uh, to rain and you know Jonah and Lisa and you know our producers um, uh, you know have a lot on their shoulders and so we as actors you know uh, we 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 have we have it easy relative to uh, relative to 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 most um, and so you know f for me. Um, it's just like kind of shining my light down, you know, my my various rabbit holes and trying to, uh, you know, to uh, to discover what might lie inside those, which was really, um, you know, what the audience was doing, too. So I just stayed in my lane, man, stayed in my crazy, chaotic, multi-layered, multi-time zone, multi-timelined multi uh, lane and and uh, and uh, and do and do my part, you know. The show is also surprisingly emotional. Uh, I mean, there's some real depth given to these characters, and your character in particular provides a real emotional center to the story. Can you talk a bit about uh, Bernard and uh, some of the uh, some of the things that he goes through in this show? Well, the hosts are are exactly metaphors for humans. Um, and so the decision to focus, you know, on uh, uh, the show on their experiences and their perspectives as opposed to, you know, Michael Crichton's brilliant, uh, you know, story uh, originally was a really ingenious one because it allowed, it, it allowed the audience to examine that metaphor even more closely. And the, I, th I think the emotion is not, uh, a result of you know our you know kind of sympathy with this technology, but it's our it's the resonances of that metaphor with our own experiences, and that's a really kind of a fascinating um, uh, construct twist. But it's one that we see often, you know, in sci-fi or in mythology, where the fantastical is used to explore um the the, the intimate uh, and the and the human and as well i think we as humans just as we as actors you know had uh to uh, to empathize with the experience of a host because that's after all that's what we that's what we do we try to take these experiences these thoughts these ideas and shape them into a character that you know seems human or at least seems as though he's human so um, that's what we do as actors. That's what hosts are doing, you know. So basically, we actors are, you know, kind of, uh, you know, our own uh, type of android or type of host. But uh, it allows uh, the audience to recognize the host in them as well, because you know, I'd have people say, you know, just the metaphor of being on a loop, of trying to break free of that, of trying to, you know, forge, you know, some type of, you know, uh, of, of, of of independence and self determination out of one's life is reflected in the in the experiences of these hosts, and I think that was a that was a compelling hook, um, uh, you know, for for actual human beings who were watching the show, and maybe some AI who were watching the show as well. But you know, they might have had have been drawn in for different reasons. <laughs> uh, the phys uh, philosophical uh, implications of the show, of course, are, are as you mentioned, very uh, uh, profound in ways and, and, and interesting what makes us human, what, what makes us conscious. And one of the interesting ideas that the show develops is this idea of suffering, uh, unlocking some of the host's consciousness and, and that being a part of, of experience. What are your thoughts about, you know, that idea that, you know, we, in, in a sense that we know who we are when we suffer, in a sense? Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's an ancient idea. And it's an ancient kind of uh, theological existential idea. Uh, and I would like to say <laughs> that it's not uh, true, that it's not relevant. But experience tells me <laughs> that that uh, uh, it, unfortunately, there's there there's some truth there. I wouldn't say that it's the sole uh, 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 element of our experiences that grounds us, but um, but um, yeah, wisdom you know does is not born without 
and neither are we for that matter without some pain you know um so um yeah that's it's that's not a that's not an idea that you know that that our writers created that's uh you know that's as old as you know as 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 navel gazing you know i wanted to ask you about your uh, episode submission for the emmys and, and i hope i pronounced this correctly uh, the well-tempered clavier is that how it's um yes well well is that that's episode seven uh no episode eight i'm sorry i think it's sorry. episode nine nine yes yes yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. yeah um why did you choose to submit that episode um because i think that it's 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 a culmination for the character the characters really for uh, bernard and for arnold and it, arnold and it also um is a bit, it's a bit of a, of a gymnastics. Uh, it's like, it's okay, this is my floor exercise, you know? And so um, there, one of the demands of the role is that we kind of be, we kind of, we kind of, we, that, that we are able to, to pull impulses and pull emotional responses you know, out of our programming, and so there was a there was a lot of um, of of that. There was also you know a, some wonderful interaction with Tony um, and ideas going back and forth. There was just so much uh, being revealed in that episode, uh, and and Bernard Bernard's journey of self discovery. Kind of mirrors the overall journeys of discovery that the audience is on uh, throughout the season in terms of understanding who, where, what, and so I just thought that it, uh, it was it was re nicely reflective of the work that I did, but also of the uh, the season uh, as a whole. Yeah. And uh, that episode is, in particular is kind of indicative of of a lot of Bernard's journey in terms of understanding who and what he he really is, and you know. Playing this character starting in one place in the beginning of the season, he knows so much more about himself and a complete overthrow of his self-understanding by the end of it. Uh, how did your approach as an actor kind of change to this character as he's undergoing these, you know, these tectonic shifts uh, of, of, his, of his own consciousness? Um, well, it was all there on the page, but... Um, um, you know, I just tried to, well, what I found myself doing was, which was incredibly satisfying, was I found it very much a, a meditation. Um, uh, and I don't mean that in an ostentatious uh, uh, way. I mean, I kind of pretentious, ostentatious way, um, ostentatious. That's, um, um, call uh, Oxford. <laughs> Add that to the lexicon. Um, uh, I, 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 that, that I found that it, um, you know, it was very much, it, it became very satisfying because again, what we do as actors is exactly what Bernard is doing when we try to create characters is what a Bernard, we go through the many of the same hallways that Bernard was, was going through in terms of trying to pluck out an understanding of himself. In our case, the character, what do we, you know, where do we, uh, you know, in building this character, what do I find in myself, in my history, in my emotional history, in my intellectual history that I bring to this in order to craft this thing? Bernard's doing this this same thing and trying to go down through the layers of, you know, of 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 <clears throat> of his experiential self. What I think is so so I just kind of went with it and enjoyed it. But what's exciting though for Bernard is that that's just the beginning of the journey for him. Um, and, and Jonah has described the first season really as kind of a, you know, a prequel that the story begins, you know, episode 11, you know, uh, or, you know, with season two, but that what we've done is we've create, you know, we've created, you know, this, you know, uh, cast of characters. We know who we are to some extent. We know where we are to some extent. We know what time we're in to some extent. So, you know, that happens over the course of 10 episodes of the week before. So, so, um, you know, so Bernard, uh, 
you know, goes through that journey of discovery. But again, there's further to go. And, you know, so it's all a great setup, but it's, he's, he's by no means at the, you know, at the, uh, at the end of the rainbow. In fact, he's like, you know, he, he's just, he's at the beginning in terms of now he knows more than he knew before, but the question remains, uh, you know, okay, what's next and what are the implications, you know? So it's going to be, you know, the, it'll be fun thereafter, you know? I certainly look forward to season two, um, as I know a lot of people do. Um, while you're here, I wanted to ask you uh, about um, Angels in America, which you won a Tony and an Emmy for. Um, you're one of the few people to ever do that. Being a part of that original production and then being a part of the Mike Nichols film that's still widely viewed today, I mean, what did that, what was that experience like for you? Of going from one to the other? Uh, well, I mean, uh, being a part of, of both of them. Oh, well, you know, that's like the, uh, I mean, that's the, that's the, that's the, that's the seed of my career, really, you know, I mean, there were things that came before it that nurtured it, but that's, everything is born out of that. I mean, that's the center of, you know, I changed, I was, uh, you know, changed my life, uh, you know, not solely from a career perspective, but in terms of, you know, this, this little, you know, human uh, thing, you know, I mean, it was, it kind of spoiled me in some ways. Uh, that was, I'd been working in the theater for about seven years prior to that, you know, kind of learning what the hell I was doing because I had no idea. And then I got that role. I spent a year and a half on Broadway doing this play, which was the most, you know, extraordinary, extraordinarily powerful contemporary piece of writing that I had read, uh, certainly in the theater. And it was, it existed in the moment and in a, in a really dangerous moment for a lot of people in that, you know, the AIDS crisis was still very much, you know, boiling in our country. And uh, I'll never forget those nights when, you know, they were clearly very sick uh, members of our audience, you know, people in, I remember people in the aisles in wheelchairs, um, that was just, it was just, um, you know, and, and I remember thinking at times that um, on certain nights that, <clears throat> and this is a rare thing and something that I don't take for granted. I remember thinking, this is exactly where I'm, where I'm supposed to be in my life right now. So that was, you know, it spoiled me to the idea that that's, that's the way it should be all, all should, always should be, you know, and it was so, so uh, doing the movie was a, different experience because it didn't have that sense of uh, immediacy. One, because we were 10 years past and two, because uh, 10 years away from, uh, uh, from the, 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 the crisis had, had lessened, still not entirely uh, disappeared. So it didn't have that level of, of immediacy um, and it was a film, which is a different experience than working in the theater. But at the same time, it was an extraordinary experience because now we were bringing it to an even broader audience and doing it with, you know, with, you know, Mike Nichols at the helm. Uh, although George Wolf, you know, who directed me on Broadway, you know, was still very much in my mind simply because he, you know, he, uh, he, you know, ushered me through that. But we had Al Pacino and Meryl Streep and, you know, and uh, and this extraordinary cast, Ben Shankman, uh, uh, you know, you know, extraordinary cast, and we were bringing it to this wider audience. And for me, I had the benefit of a year and a half of rehearsal on, on in the theater. So I felt uh, I felt uh, you know very. I felt I was in pretty good shape going into it. And there was the opportunity to take the language from the from uh, the stage and refine it and hone it. And uh, and bring out the nuances in it on camera. So I was really looking forward to that. But there wasn't a lot that I was going to be uh, a lot of choices that I hadn't explored over the course of however many hours I'd stayed. You know, I'd been on stage with it. So um, it was it was a wonderful experience, wonderful experience. And 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 the only reason that I was the I think that I was the only one from the Broadway production who to do the film was was just because I just happened to be you know it's just the you know the 
the luck of the by birth i happen to be a little bit younger than everyone i you know um and so 10 years later i you know i was still more or less you know you know able to slot in there yeah. <laughs> well, oh, go ahead daniel oh no i was just gonna say, you know it's so interesting you know angels in america is, has such you know this dense this deep philosophical approach to what it is to be human and what it is to be alive and now of course westworld has in a very different ways, of course, uh, uh, also very deep ideas about humanity. How do these kind of uh, uh, these kinds of projects inform or affect y your own kind of sense of, of self and humanity in the world we live in? Um, I try to I try to find things, you know, to work on um, that intrigue me, that challenge me, that are smart. Um, and I try to find collaborators uh, who are who do those things as well. And the first interaction that I have with those collaborators is generally through the written word. So you know, if I read a script and it jumps off the page at me, then you know that's 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 the first invitation to you know to uh, you know whatever I'm, work I'm able to pull out of it. So I, I, it's really just what, you know, what, what's the music of the, you know, it does, do I, does that music sound good to me? You know, does that music, you know, does that music hit me? You know, the music of that script. And if it doesn't, you know, I, you know, I move on. So, um, and you know, angels, you know, I, I was a political science major in college, you know, I grew up in Washington, DC, uh, you know, where, you know, when when you're born, you know, the doctor slaps you and injects politics into your bloodstream. You know, that's like just the way it goes. You know, that's what we do. And so I've I, I, I've I've looked for those opportunities to blend that side of myself with the creative side. And so, you know, again, with angels, that was, you know, that was the that was it. That was the you know, I, you know, I kind of jumped down on the top of the mountain, you know, and there was like, you know, there was no going any any higher than that there was only kind of you know building a plateau outward and it's funny because i remember a friend of mine from college said uh he said uh we were hanging out we were i would moved to new york he was in town we were hanging out you know we were doing our like kind of like socratic late night you know drink and phil, you know philosophize thing and he said jeffrey i don't know why he said this it was the most ridiculous thing he was one he was saying the theater is the highest calling i was saying oh nonsense it's just you know, it is that but he's saying and then he made this he made this prophecy he said, one day you are going to do a play in which, in which you announce the death of Ronald Reagan. And I said, sign me up. <laughs> um, and, uh, and when we, you know, when, you know, when, when I read Angels and started to do it, at some point I thought back to that conversation because obviously you're not talking about the physical death of Ronald Reagan, but certainly the political death was something in you know in some ways that you know that that was needed certainly the death of silence around the suffering of uh of and 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 deaths of you know american citizens needed to uh needed to be uh laid to rest and so uh anyway that you know it's just I, I when i can find those things that marry my interest whether they you know um you know um, with with my work I, I go for it in the case of westworld um i only knew what the possibilities might be after reading the first script because that's all we, we had we had this uh this movie movie uh michael crichton's movie and there was nothing there's no novel you know so there's no real source materials but when i read the script saw the movie talked to jonah uh recognized how wonderfully constructed the the script was there was an efficiency to it there was a kind of uh, uh there it implied um a very complex structure going forward so i could only imagine what uh, the possibilities were and that was enough to compel me as well the collaborators that i would be working with were compelling and so I just imagined that this was a place where we could really go anywhere 
we could explore, you know, the, the, the limits of the exploration were, 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 uh, were only determined by the imaginations of, you know, of these massive brains that I was working with, Jonah Nolan and Lisa Joy and J.J. Abrams. So, um, you know, I jumped on board. Well, I'm certainly glad you did. Uh, Jeffrey Wright, thank you so much, and uh, congratulations again on your Emmy nomination. It was a pleasure chatting with you. Oh, thank you, man. I really appreciate it. Thank All you. right. Have a good one. Thanks.